Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here with the Mizu M3 Note. Gonna unbox it, give some first impressions. This is the first device I have used or checked out from Mizu before, so pretty excited to check it out. Let's open it up. All right, let's get this guy open. So I'm just gonna slide the box off right here. Greet it with the device. I believe it's pronounced Mizu. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Just leave a comment. I'm not exactly sure that's how you pronounce it, but I believe it is. So I'm gonna take this screen protector off of it. And on the back there is a, another sticker as well, letting you know about the dual SIMs. And right away, it's a little cool. Um, it's a little cool in my room. So it is an all metal body design, as you can see. Embedded battery, I believe. So I'm gonna press and hold the power button that's on the right side, turn it on, set it to the side. And you have a SIM ejector right here, and it says Fly Me on it, which I believe is the modified version of, oh, it's what they called their skin over Android, Fly Me. I believe it's not Flyme or pronounced like that so please forgive my pronunciations and just a couple booklets quick start guide all that good stuff looks like you have an AC adapter and then you have a micro USB cable right here and then it says earphone not included so it lets you know that they're not going to include earphones right there so <laughs> there you have it AC adapter just basically the charger and the phone itself. So let's go through the start. I'm gonna select English, obviously, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. I'm gonna skip through this real quick, only talk about anything if it's out of the ordinary. All right, so really nothing out of the ordinary at the beginning. I skipped Wi-Fi and went straight to the home screen, to be honest, that was the first thing. So the system is upgraded, your phone has been upgraded. Let's go ahead and jump into settings, show you guys, uh, whoops, I don't know why that just happened. Let's go to about phone. And it is on Android version 5.1. You'll see Fly Me 5.1.3 as well. Now, this is a 5.5-inch uh, 1080p display, for those of you wondering. It is an LCD panel as well. has a 13-megapixel camera on the back, which I'm loading up now, which took a, a little bit of time to actually load up. There is uh, focusing and shutter speed as well. All right, so not terrible, nothing, it's not crazy fast by any means. There's a quick look down at the bottom. I believe it's a mono speaker and the other one is just for show. You have your charging port looking over on the side. You have your volume rockers and power button, which you need to press decently hard. They're very clicky and feel don't feel cheap at all, I guess I should say. On the left side is just your SIM slot right there. On the back, there's that 13 megapixel camera with an LED flash as well and then up at the top you got your microphone and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in terms of storage right out of the box not installing anything you have 9.71 gigs free of 16 gigabytes it's a 16 gigabyte model with two gigabytes of ram in terms of the processor it has a mediatek helio p10 processor so i know some people have some strong opinions about mediatek processors in general but we'll see how well this actually will perform now one interesting thing to note is you'll see right there it has some quick toggles right there but check this out. So if I go into settings and the home button actually acts as a, which is also a fingerprint scanner. I'll get to that in a second. The home button actually acts as a back button if you don't press it. It's an actual button though. So you'll see, I'll go into it, press it as a capacitive button and it goes back. However, if I press in all the way as the button and it, it will go to the home button. So there's no capacitive buttons on the side by any means. So you might be thinking, hey, how am I going to get to the recent apps? option so let's say i'm in the calculator app you swipe from the bottom and it's going to get to those recent apps so a little bit different right there i actually think i might like it once i get used to it swiping off from the bottom is not is actually pretty quick to do to get to our recent apps now here we go like i said you can use it to unlock your device and other various things so let's go ahead and place our finger right there it does not have marshmallow yet which is interesting out of the box you would hope it has will be updated to it soon it says succeeded and I'm gonna try, I hit used to unlock screen, so it looks like I'm gonna have to set it now. Let's go ahead and hit check. You have to enter a passcode, one, two, three, four, continue. One, two, three, four. Now let's try it. So let's go to the lock screen, press and hold. There you go. Let's try again with just setting it on there. Looks like you can't do that, but you can press the button obviously, and that's going to get things to go. Let's go ahead and try it like this. So fairly quick, which is good to see. We'll see how accurate it is as well. I'm going to try it with a finger that's not it, and you'll see fingerprint mismatch. Good to see. Looks like it's working pretty well. Now you'll see there is no app drawer at all because... Now see the stock launcher does not have an app drawer, which can be changed via the Play Store, of course. And then, of course, you have this app. I actually don't know what this app is. So you'll see ad blocking, flash play, headline, shopping cart. So a bunch of... 
random things, I should say. There's a folder right here for popular apps, toolkit, Google. So if you pop into Google, actually, I want to try pressing and holding the home button as well to see what that does. Looks like it locked the display. Interesting. So let's press and hold the home button and it locks it. So interesting. I uh, have yet to see that. It doesn't activate Google now. There you saw fingerprint mismatch. There it goes. Uh, so kind of interesting there. I wonder if you can customize that. Let's jump into settings and see if I can find something maybe under personalization to customize it. It doesn't look like it. But again, interesting that you can press this as a back button. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. Swiping up seems to work pretty how it should if I can multitask like so. Now, I couldn't find anything to customize this. I'll look a little bit further as I dive into it. And I want to make note, it has a 4100 milliamp hour embedded battery, which is very big, which does add some thickness. So make note of that. It's a little bit thicker than I'm used to, but that's good because I would rather a bigger battery and a little bit more thickness and weight to the phone. But anyways, those are my first impressions and thoughts on the Mizu M3 Note. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, click that thumbs up. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. All links in the description below. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.